So the major update is finally out and that means we have an all new leopard. Actually leopards because Sweden has one as well in the form of the Stridsvarn 122B Plus which is essentially a Leopard 2A5 with some local upgrades uh, which include things like a new armor um, piece on the roof. But what we're here to talk about today is the original and probably the most modern tank currently in service or entering service right now is the Leopard 2A7. So what is it? Well, on the face of it, it looks a lot like the 2A6. In fact, it has nearest makes no difference, the same gun, the same armor layout, uh, but there are some subtle differences. The main one is that this isn't an L55, it's an L55A1, which has some improvements. But the main thing as well is the uh, all new hull armor. There is actually add-on armor on the hull, which gives it a whole new composite screen down here. And on top of that, it means it's better protected against rounds like, let's say, its contemporaries might use, like the T-80 BVM. As you can see here, where it would normally go through, there are a couple of spots where it definitely it does, but if you're exposing that much of your hull on a leopard, then you're probably doing it wrong. But you can see here, it is actually well protected against something like this. Now, against the newer 3BM-60, you're still not really going to be aiming or shooting through it unless it's the lower section right here where the tow hooks are. But if you get slightly above it, you'll notice, yeah, it still more or less goes through. The armor on the turret cheeks are still really tough, and they are very similar to what you'll get on the 2A6, but where the 2A7 also differs is in the addition of mine protection. There's only a piece down here actually protects against, well, mines. But because mines aren't in the game yet, what this actually does is give you... Well, it's really hard to show it because it doesn't really want to show it. But it does give you an additional plating underneath, which will hopefully protect you from explosives, like heat rounds, HE rounds, landing underneath the tank. So it more or less does what it says on the tin, but that doesn't mean we're getting mines added to War Thunder anytime soon. As much as I would like to see that happen one day, it might be fun. The internals are very much the same as the 2A5 and 2A4, so you're not going to see too much difference there. The layout's more or less the same. But of course, how does it compare? to something like the Leopard 2PL, which is a completely separate upgrade compared with the AMAP and the 2A7. Well, let's find out. Now, of course, seeing it in the wild, the Leopard 2A7 definitely does look very much different to a 2A4. I mean, it's much sleeker, it's much more pointy, but it is still based on the same tank and platform, which means they more or less do the same kind of thing. But I will say, because this has the same, or more or less the same, 1500 horsepower diesel engine, the extra weight of all that armor puts it up to 66.8 tons, which is pretty hefty, meaning mobility is somewhat restricted compared to the 2A4, or indeed even the 2A5. In fact, I'm pretty sure the PL actually would be a little bit more mobile than this. I got all our leopards all the way out over here. We do have these fancy Gen 3 thermals. Very, very nice. As much as I still disagree with the way War Thunder handles thermals, I think these are really, really nice. All right, we got hit, but uh, that didn't seem to do any damage as far as I can tell. Very interesting. That Abram's definitely got the shock of his life. I think there is somebody right here. Yep, there is somebody right there. I think the 2A6 just got his engine taken out. Can't quite remember where he was. Oh, hello. Right there. All right, there we go. There's T-Series knocked out. We do have the DM-53 rounds. We do have these nice new markers as well. And it kind of nicely shows where uh, enemies have been killed. All right, I'm gonna relocate. Yeah, you definitely feel that mobility change with the extra weight. It's not as quick to get up and go. Its acceleration is a little bit slower. And speed-wise, you can see, like, its top speed in reverse is 28. Whereas I believe you can hit 30, at least, in the uh, 2A4. So, it is definitely a little bit slower. Oh, 2PSO's got his uh, ammo rack on fire. Alright, let's see if we can find what's shooting at him. Now, obviously, with the Leopards, you are more or less playing the role of a sniper. Uh, even with the additional armor, I just don't feel that it's a tank that's really nicely suited for, like, direct conflict. Uh, as weird as that is to say, because it is direct fire that we're engaging in right now, but... It's uh, a vehicle that excels at hull down and sniping long-range shots. And the armor is just sort of like, it's good to have, but uh, 
you know, not something you want to have to use. Ooh, we are really struggling to get up this hill. Now, crew skills, of course, notwithstanding, because this crew that I'm using definitely has the tank driving skill maxed out, as well as a uh, targeting and range finding skill pretty much maxed out. So it's definitely not a case of uh, the crew skills affecting it, that's for sure. Oh, something's been hit over there. Just, I think that leopard's being hit in the rear. Potentially an Abrams down there. I think. Based on the kill feed, anyway, I think there's an Abrams down here. One thing I do like is how dynamic the uh, the bottom menu is now. When you s scope in, you get a little bit of a uh, change in the menu. It's nice. Oh, is that a Sabo pedal? That's another thing that's really messing me up is these Sabo pedals. They do not work the way More Thunder says they do. <laughs> I think it's the nicest way I can put that. Oh, I'm a little too far forward. Hang on. I'm gonna help him repair. All right, let's drop some artillery over here, just in case somebody's still there. Oh, did something just hit you in the side there? I think something did. Oh, that was a terrible, terrible shot. Well, you know, he did finish him off. So, you know, props to him. He did do it. Oh, what got you? Oh, I see him. Oh, I was just a second too late to get him. It's got a fantastically fast reload as well, this gun. And, like, that's completely realistic as well. Like, in training, we do aim for some pretty fast manual reloading speed. So, it is realistic to have a Leopard reload that fast. One thing I do find interesting, and this is more a comment on the Leopard, and less a comment on the actual, uh... Oh, hello. What's been hit? What, what's got me? Hello. No, that wasn't it. All right, I'm on fire. Should probably put that out. What hit me though? Oh, it was over here. I shot at the wrong thing. So one thing I do find really interesting, and this is more just a comment on the leopard rather than uh, War Thunder, but you see this device at the end of the barrel here? This right here? It's actually a mirror. It's uh, called the, the MRS mirror, which stands for Muzzle Reference System. Basically, after firing for a little while, long-barreled guns tend to start heating up. Well, all barrels on guns tend to start heating up. And when the guns are kind of long, what ha tends to happen is they bend. And so to keep the sights and the muzzle aligned, we have a really simple system of just having a mirror at the end of the barrel. And you shine a light at it, and it gives you a little sight mark to align it with. So it's more just, I find it really interesting that that is still being used at this point in time, but it would make sense given that it's still the same, or at least a variant of the same uh, sighting system, I think. It's just a newer gun, so if it's, you know, it's one of those cases of it, it ain't broke, don't fix it. Ooh, look, it's the new Challenger 2. So one thing that also needs mentioning, and I don't think I can show it, because it doesn't appear on the x-ray, uh, spall liners. So, spall, which is essentially the fragments of armor that come off when a projectile goes through them, are getting caught by these new, um, internal liners. What it essentially means for War Thunder is that if you, for example, fire a Sabo round, or any round that relies on fragmentation, the spread of that fragmentation is lower. It reduces the amount of fragments they have. Now, that's not exactly correct to how they work. What they should actually do is just reduce the cone or spread angle of the fragments, but it's a step in the right direction towards sort of that authentic, realistic feel that we're going for. And what this also means for gameplay is that your crew and any internal components are better protected from projectiles such as that. Now this is present on the 2A7, I believe, as well as all of the newer 12.3 or 11.7 vehicles. That does mean you are a lot more survivable than it would initially appear. So even if the external armor doesn't look like it's more protective, the internals may well be, provided it has a spore liner. Now it was also mentioned in the update that they changed all of the sounds. I have noticed new sounds on the planes, I haven't noticed them on the tanks yet, so I'm not 100% sure about that one. But let me know down in the comments if they do sound different to you, because I, I am curious. Because I guess the way things sound isn't something that I really notice all that easily. The T-72B3 looks like he's shooting at something in the distance. Yeah, the, there he is. Ooh, leopard on leopard violence. Ooh. I got him. All right, 2A5 is in trouble. I guess maybe the sounds do, they're a little, like, like the cannon sounds are a little more punchy, if that makes sense. Oh, hello. Got there, I think. Ooh, I think that was close. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can hit that Apache, but it's the way that it's moving right now. It's kind of slipping sideways. I don't know if that's something I'm going to be able to hit very easily. 
Oh, very close, very close. Yeah, that was very close. Uh, let's go here. I think there's an AA shooting at him now, so my services were not required. Have we just, like, pushed them back to their spawn already? I think we have. That's, uh, slightly unfortunate for him. All right, I'm gonna help you out here. Since you're clearly in trouble. There's also an Abrams coming towards me, I think. Could be right here. Oh, really? He's he's still able... Oh, because he hasn't moved. I mean, my breach is out anyway, so... There we go. There's a helicopter coming, isn't there? It sounds like a little bird. I hear a little bird. I don't see a little bird. That's probably the most terrifying thing. Oh, there it is. I mean, do you mind? Is, what is that? I'm just getting hit, like, a lot. <laughs> he's not- the thing is, he's not killing me, but I'm not able to do anything about <laughs> Literally the most unfortunate thing. Hang on a second. I mean, I'm farming hits off of him. It's not achieving anything, though. But I can just do this. Like, I can do that. I might be done for here. There we go. That took a while. Well, I guess it's as good a time as any to show off the new tornado that the Germans get. Not that it really matters, I guess. But here it is. With all 12,000 pounds payload that we've got. Pretty much the same as the Marine Flieger that was available in the event. But it's a premium. I tell you what though, I already know how many people are going to be screaming in the comment section about why I was shooting at that Apache earlier and not using these lovely DM-11s that I have, which have time fuses on them. And to that, I respond, I forgot I had them. <laughs> but also because the DM-11 round was not something I actually ever personally used or trained with. So our teaching was always to fire Sabos at helicopters because Sabos fly faster so and flatter, so they are more accurate against an airborne target. So there you go, that is the reasoning behind that. But of course, you know, your mileage may vary, and of course, War Thunder is a realistic game only in the naming sense, not in the realistic sense. <laughs> there are some things that aren't gonna reflect real life. Ooh! What are you doing there? Oh, it's a Freccia. Save the 2A6. Save him. Can I help repair as well? Is that a thing I can do? No? Okay. All right, we got two of them over here, PLs engaging. Is that something? Yep, that is something. <laughs> okay, I tracked it. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? I can't see through the smoke. Come on, let me hit him. Ah, there's another Abrams in here. Another one. Okay, he's down. Oh, I just got hit. All right, on the way. All right, his breach is out. Let's see if I can hit him again. No. Nope. Oh, just got hit again. On the way. No, nope, never mind. All right, I'm gonna drop some artillery on there. There's a lot of smoke up. All right, T T90M's covering me. He's got me repairing. All right, thank him. We're gonna get moving. All right, PLSS is repairing. I'm gonna just leapfrog him here. Normally, I would not be this aggressive with my leopard, but... Oh, I just got him. I saw him for the briefest of moments. All right, I got an Abrams around the corner. I think that's a T80 right there. Abrams? Definitely, definitely. Yep. There he is, there he is, there he is. Come on, poke your head out again. Poke it out. Oh, that was a ricochet. That was a bad shot. Oh no, T80 got hit. Just give me give me a little bit of your hull here. Gotcha. Come on. I, got, I gotta get moving again. I'm on fire. I don't I don't have I don't have any extinguishers left. Oh, and so I die. Man, that TKX has an insane reload, though. Still, I mean, at this point, you know we gotta do it to him. This this feels mean. It genuinely feels mean. All right, here we go. It's gonna be kind of a lob. All right, I think I see one right here. Is that one right there? Drop one there. Drop in there. There, there, there. There, there. And we're out. We're out, we're out. Taking a couple of hits here. I don't think I hit anything. <gasps> Oh no! I think that was a Sam. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Alright, so that's a new feature that we just got in War Thunder, is the ability to use backups uh, without having to add them to a vehicle. Because, you know, sometimes you're not sure if you want to have your backup attached to a vehicle permanently. And so you don't have to anymore. Uh, if you have any in your inventory that you haven't used, 
you can just pop them mid-battle. They're not free, but you do always have them. And I like that. I like that. It's, it's a very nice change. I will say, though, the amount of hits I took from all different sides when I was on the A point earlier, that is not something I would have expected from a Leopard. I mean, I'm not saying the Leopard is fragile. It's just that if you're in a position where you're taking hits, it's already not a good place. You shouldn't, that shouldn't be happening at all. But if it does have to happen, at least the 2A7 is armored enough where you can take those hits. I, I'm astonished, honestly. There's something where I was thinking, and I, I'm sure a lot of people thought this as well, that top tier tank gameplay was just going to be who shoots first and it's going to be just one shots. And in a world where that one shot is all that matters, the snipers and the campers will always win. Okay, the, the, you know, it's an exaggeration, but... That's no fun for anyone. Hello. And that's not to say it doesn't still happen, you know, that one shot can still take you out. But we now are at a stage where we have the armor to give us a fighting chance. That's not something I would have said of a Leopard. You know, maybe a T-80, maybe a T-90. Uh, the Abrams turret, certainly, but definitely not a Leopard. I don't know if that's 100% gonna stay that way, but I, I really do like that. Also, that's an F-15, so that's slightly terrifying. But also, for ground forces, maybe not, because that is... The an F-15A, it's not a Strike Eagle, so we should be okay. That being said though, they can carry guided bombs, but maybe it's not all good. Is that a York? I think it is. It just looks so weird when it's destroyed. But yeah, this is another game where we've pushed them all the way back to spawn. That is Im interesting. I won't say impressive, but it's interesting. But then again, in both cases, we've been up against the, the US. It's what seems to happen a lot. Man, that plane is fast. Look at that. Oh, that's an F-16. That's a different plane. But they have had to relocate a whole bunch of things on the tank compared to the 2A4. For example, all the stuff that's normally mounted on the front is actually mounted on the rear, on the engine deck instead. And a few of the systems have had to be relocated as well. So, for example, those little fans over there that look like fans. Uh, that's where the old NBC system used to be. I don't know if it's still an NB system on the 2A7, but it's there. Or at least that's where it was. And it has the same sort of APU as the Leopard 2 PL, I think. Although, I think it's a newer version, but it is still located right there on the, the rear of the hull. I would love to see that modeled in the game one day to actually have a use. You know, in case, like, for example, if your engine gets knocked out, that, you know, maybe instead of it draining the battery down, it switches to the APU instead. That way you can still have full function of your turret for longer, unless the APU itself is knocked out too. I mean, it's just an idea, but I think that would be really cool. I have a gameplay purpose for it. All right, Abrams is backing up here. Two A7 over there took a hit from somewhere. Where is that somewhere? It's getting a hit from this side here. Oh, it was over there. That is interesting. Uh, thank the lord for backups but also i picked the wrong side to spawn at clearly All right what is happening on this side this is chaos what i really hate that they haven't fixed the lighting yet since this lighting and these particles look really out of place like the dust just looks like it's glowing now we have a major update and they don't fix that i've said this before in previous videos but Man, the, uh, the engine sounds for the Leopard are perfect. Like, they're actually perfect. You need repairs? I'll come repair. Here. Stop moving. Stop moving. I can't even see what you're being, sh you're sh being shot at by. Uh... Are you okay, buddy? Why can I not repair him? Oh, okay. I was trying to. Alright, well, I guess I'm going up here then. I'm being shot at. I think I, I think I can just see him. Oh, hello. I see you. Alright, that's through his gunner and through his sights there. His breach is not out, though. There we go. Now his breach is out. And once again... Nope. Yeah, three shots in a row is kind of pushing it. But yeah, let's not peek the same spot twice. I'm gonna go around this way, and then we're gonna go for the A point. Oh, I hit the Abrams in the turret cheek. Couldn't quite see him. There is something up there. Oh, hello. I see you. Oh, I saw him just for the briefest of moments. That Leclerc is still there, though. Right there. I see him. 
Yeah, but that's skimming his roof right now. Oh, somebody got him. Good news for me. I don't know if they reworked the uh, sounds for the machine guns, but they do sound good. Feel like he's right here. There he is. It's a very distinctive sound the Abrams makes. Don't worry, Leopard, I'll help you. Leo, stick together. All right, this time I'm actually going to use the HE round. Problem is, I think that might be a little too far away. Yeah, ATGM beats HE round. All right, bombs away. Oh, hit. Well, that wasn't what I was going for. Oh, hello. Incoming enemy. Nope, not that. That. There we go. Oh, what that is. I hit it. Oh, wait, hang on, that's the enemy base. Enemy base. Turn, 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 turn. Woo! I mean, this game's pretty much over, though, so... We should be fine. So... The Leopard 2 A7V. I believe V means... Export version of the 2 A7? So not exactly the 2 A7 or 2 A7 Plus, but it is a variant of it anyway. It is... The Ultimate Leopard. I think that's the easiest way of saying it. I mean, sure, it's a little heavier, it does suffer mobility-wise compared to the others, and if you are somebody who prioritizes mobility over anything else like I do, you're gonna find that it's probably not what you're looking for. But that being said, if you were to compare it to the 2A6, this is essentially a far, far more survivable 2A6. And it has near as, nearly the same gun. It is nearly the same gun. I think the stats are pretty much the same. Uh, the rate of fire might be a little faster. I think that's about it. But with the upgrade of the thermals, I mean, the Leopard, if you've grinded all the way to the 2A7, you're going to find that it isn't going to be bringing anything that you can't already do with a Leopard. So you've still got amazing gun depression. You've still got really good hull down characteristics and a really accurate gun. Coupled with the DM-53, which I think is probably a, the most consistent, or at least best performing, Sabo round at its BR. Arguably, anyway. And you do also have the DM-11, which allows you to sometimes take out aircraft. Sometimes. All that is to say, at 11.7, I don't think you're gonna be struggling in any way, and the 2A7 is way more survivable than it has any right to be, honestly. And it does everything a Leopard should. It's a little slower, but it also means you get to survive way more hits, and I think that is fantastic. I don't know necessarily if the spall liners or any of the armor characters is going to get changed in future, or even the functions of the spall liner and that, but I think as far as the Leopard goes, this is as good as it gets right now. And uh, I mean, if there was any vehicle I would check out in the major update first, of course it was going to be this. I was just waiting for it to be finally out and finished. And it is everything that I kind of expected it to be. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and of course subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. More War Thunder air superiority content is to come. So do stick around for that. My name is Panzer. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time. Man, this tank is good.